Der Frieden wird nicht haben, wenn der Elektronik Flying is uh, another dimension of living, uh, especially flying fighters. It's much more meaningful, much more intensive way of living, of acting, of moving in space and in time. You feel it when you stop flying fighters. I have a good friend who says that uh, fighter pilot dies twice, and it's true. When you stop flying fighters, it's the first time you die. There's no doubt in the mind of the decision makers that uh, we couldn't take a chance. We knew that Iraqis uh, could do exactly what we did in Dimona. There was a big argument in the government. Some ministers like General uh, Yadin, uh, Yosef Burg, were against it. They thought it was strategically wrong. The risk was uh, quite high. Nobody expected that. All the eight F-16s would land uh, safely back in Israel. Begin, with the help of Eitan and Ivri, persuaded them all, and uh, it was decided to go ahead. When the F-16s landed in Israel in the summer of 1980, David Ivry, uh, who was the commanding officer of the Air Force, thought uh, the F-16s could do it better and asked me to uh, see if it's possible. I came back from Tel Aviv from that meeting with him, quite excited uh, to the squadron, and called Ilan Ramon, who was in charge of uh, navigations, as we call it. He uh, learned the problem for a few hours, came back to me and said that it's slightly out of range, so we had to do some tricks in order to do it without a refueling. The first time we almost did it was in May 81, but they stopped us on the runway because of some leak. It was started again in June 81, and then it was performed and we took off. We were quite surprised that the Iraqis uh, didn't react, didn't take off, didn't uh, fire any missiles at us. We couldn't understand how they did not see us. They could see us on the radar scopes at least 15 minutes before the bombing. It was disappointing. We wanted them to, to play, to do their part, and then our victory would have been larger, bigger, more realistic. King Hussein saw us one minute or so after takeoff as we crossed the, the coast south of Aqaba to Saudi Arabia, flying east, and he reported they did nothing with this information. They did not understand the meaning of his report, and it was the king. We were very lucky. On the way back, we chased the setting sun for 90 minutes. When you fly toward the setting sun, it, it, it stays on the horizon. And each of us thought about that proverb from the Bible, Shemesh Begivon Dom Ve'erech Be'amekelon, when the sun and the moon stop and, uh, in the sky until Israel wins the war against the, the four kings. When we landed in Etzion after three hours of flight, it was already dark. The American reaction, as we rem remember, was very harsh. Uh, they denounced us in the UN and uh, they stopped the su supply of F-16s and they stopped the coordination between the Mossad and the CIA. But after a few months, was okay. Only 10 years later, the first Gulf War, everybody in the US and in other places, other countries, realized that it had been the right thing to do. When you are in charge of someone else, you don't, you're not afraid. That's human being, human nature. And since I was the leader and I was in charge of some other pilots, I was not afraid. The only time I was afraid in Yom Kippur War was one flight when I was not a leader, I, was, uh, I flew with another leader, and then at that flight I was very afraid. After two or three years of uh, being a squadron commander, you are a different person. 
When I dream about flying, I dream about the phantoms.